Welcome back. You're watching Business Today here on KTN News. Glad you are tuned in. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, we are going to be speaking real estate franchising. And uh, to have that discussion with me, we have the managing director for Caldwell Banker. This is some of the real estate big players that we're having in Kenya today. But they are bigger in the United States. So, uh, Danielle Calloway, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Right. Let's start by talking about, uh, you know, a lot of people know about real estate. But when it comes to real estate franchising, not many uh, people know about that. You want to bring us up to speed? Sure, absolutely. So, I will say that in the Kenyan market, there hasn't really been um, a lot of local real estate franchising. That being said, international franchises within the local m market is quite um, relevant, mm -hmm. and we've seen it in real estate, and we're seeing it increasingly in food. If you look at the franchises that have entered in really just in the last five years, you know, with your with your Subways and your KFCs mm -hmm. and your Domino's, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Right. These are all examples of international franchises right. coming into the local market. We've but that has not been big for housing, though, or real estate for that matter. Sure. Mm -hmm. So if you actually look at some of the other real estate companies and actually some of the larger brands, a lot of them are actually international brands, mm -hmm. either from the UK or South Africa. So there's been precedent, but the models, the business model has been a bit different. So some of the models have come in and they've set up one office mm -hmm. um, and they function as one office. The franchising model is a bit different. It's a different growth strategy, which allows us to enter markets in a meaningful way and not to come in to say, okay, we're experts on a global scale, but to come in and to work together and participate in the local market with local entrepreneurs who have established businesses, mm -hmm. who are working in real estate and who, guide, who are guided by the same ethical principles of functioning in real estate. And yet they see the benefit of affiliating with an international brand mm -hmm. that brings along with it technology, brand, branding and market positioning, as well as training, right? Cobalt Banker is 110 years old this year. All right. <laughs> so let's talk about the uh, model that you are using at Caldwell Banker. Uh, how different is it from the other players that we have in the industry? Sure, sure. So um, as I was hinting on a bit, so we're coming in um, as an international brand who's looking to uh, work together with um, entrepreneurs, if you mm -hmm. will, small SMEs in the real estate sector where we can basically provide training, business development support, as well as a technology platform that allows them to market and to service clients in a new and meaningful way. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at uh, franchises and you look at the success of franchises versus an SME that's not branded mm -hmm. internationally, mm -hmm. you'll see that there's a, a strong difference in, in or correlation, if you will, for the success of a franchisee uh, or a franchise business. To be specific, research that was done in South Africa as well as the U.S. shows that an SME that goes into, into business over a period of five years, you're about 50% likely for that business to be successful after five years. Mm -hmm. Whereas under a franchise brand, you're about 90% likely All for right. that business to still be functioning. All right. So what are the determinants for uh, success when you're looking at real estate franchising? Mm -hmm. So real estate franchising from uh, a B to B level. So really, we measure our success both on a business to business mm -hmm. and then business to client level. Mm -hmm. So business to business level, it's about coming in, making meaningful relationships with the local market. Right? So we're not here to compete, if you will, but making meaningful relationships within the local market that supports independent entrepreneurs. So there's correlations with franchise businesses to entrepreneurship and job creation. Right? So that's ultimately success. From a B to C perspective, so business to customer client perspective, um, our ideal end goal, if you will, mm -hmm. is to see clients happy with agents. I've had a number of, of people say to me, you know, why would I pay an agent a percentage when they do nothing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And that's, and, right, and, yeah. and that's the, the sentiment. But to have an agent who is professional, who's transparent, who is, a, is an asset to you and a professional 
when you're looking at buying, selling, renting your home, office building, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so increasing the level of, of professionalism in the market, as it is now, you know, you go to anyone and everyone tries to sell you a plot of land. You go to your butcher, he's going to give you a kilo of meat, mm -hmm. and he's going to tell you about a plot that's available. Right. You yeah. go to your dentist for a root canal, and he's going to tell you about another plot that's available. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's let's talk about um, the fact that we are looking at a very lucrative market, but also one that is having its own ups and downs. Uh, quarter four of 2015 uh, did indicate a, a drop in uh, apartment costs, for instance. Uh, in fact, it dropped by 2.3 percent, according to Haas Consult's report. And so, what does this mean for you as a franchise? Um, does this mean that 2016 is going to look better? And if it doesn't. Um, how do you expect to make a profit out of it? So, you know, all real estate markets have life cycles. Mm -hmm. If you're in the game long enough, you know that there are ups and downs. Right. You expect it. As a franchise model, um, it's, it's actually a good time for us because usually when there's a downturn in the market, people are looking to, affili to affiliate. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, they want to sell their property, right? Everyone needs a place to live. They want to sell, they want to rent. There's still transactions going on in the market. And the name of the game is making those transactions happen faster. So when you become part of a, a, a franchise model where you have a network of agents, a network of, of, of stakeholders or partners or developers who are contributing, right, that process goes faster. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're, we're not discouraged at all. Uh, even if you look at, uh, there's a report that was released just a couple of days ago by Jones Lang LaSalle. Right. Um, they released an index on city momentum, right? And Nairobi, or Kenya is the, Nairobi as a city is the only um, African country that has momentum out of 20 countries. And on real estate momentum, if out of five, out of five on the top list, Nairobi was also there. So we're, we're actually looking forward to 2016. Um, there's a lot more room for growth, a lot more, uh, a lot more uh, room for professional standards mm -hmm. on the marketing and sales side. Right. Um, so we we're, we're think now is actually a great timing. Great, professional standards, you say. Yeah. So how long has uh, Caldwell Banker been in Kenya as a franchise? Sh sure, so Caldwell Banker is, came in last year. Um, and so we've been setting up office. We have an office space at the Oval. Mm -hmm. um, and we are just establishing ourselves in the market, um, looking to do a more formal launch later this year. Mm -hmm. um, we, as, you, as I told you before, we've been in real estate, if you will, since 1906. Yes. Uh, and we're in 46 countries now. Mm -hmm. So this, one thing that's interesting to note, this is the first country in Sub-Saharan Africa. So we have really high hopes for Kenya not only being a leader um, for, for, you know, with, within Kenya, right. but really being a leader in Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really hoping this is a, a great start this year, and this is the start to other countries that we will expand to in Sub-Saharan Africa. Right. Well, thank you so much for yeah. coming. Thank you. We do appreciate thank you. Managing Director for Caldwell Banker, that is uh, Danielle Calloway. Thank you so much for joining us uh, and talking about real estate franchising. Now, despite all the noise and acrimony that has accompanied the issuance of the $2 billion euro bond, the government says it is gearing up to tap the international debt market once more, speaking during the launch of the International Islamic Finance Conference of Africa, Treasury Secretary Henry Rotit said Kenya would be issuing Sharia compliant Sukuk bond in the next one year or so that would be used to finance infrastructure developments in the market. Kenya will also be uh, looking to join the Organization of Islamic Countries to unlock the opportunities presented in the lucrative but relatively untapped $2 trillion industry. Kenya will also adjust the rules and regulations governing the financial sector to avail Sharia compliance products in the financial market, SACO, pension and issuance, insurance sector rather, as the country works to make itself both the conventional and the Islamic financial hub for the region. Uh, for the issuance of Sukuk bond, the amount will depend on our financing need uh, in the financial year. Uh, we typically, uh, when you go to this market, you only indicate the amount at the time of you know entering the market. 
uh, if you are going for 500 million dollars or a billion dollars uh, i think that time will indicate what exactly that we, we will need for now the important thing is it's a preparation documentations are required legal uh, go through the legal processes it might mean amendment to the backing laws uh, and, all, and, and the like for us to uh, participate in this very important uh, sector and we'll take a short break but remember we're going to be having that discussion on tapping into Islamic finance and Michael Karanja is going to be having that conversation so do stay with us